I'll be doing these three problems today. Big O notation is used in computer science and in some areas of mathematics like number theory. My number theory thesis has about 50 big O's. Most people would think that it's a bit nerdy to count exactly how many big O's there are, so let's move on. Um, you can see big O at work when you use a computer to work on data. When you multiply the amount of data by 10, you will notice that sometimes the time taken uh, increases by a factor of about 10, but sometimes it could be a factor of 100 or about 1,000 or maybe even longer, and you sort of get sick of waiting around. So this is, the, is what Big O is trying to measure. So let's look at the first question. Now, what we can do with this n squared here is that we can search for a constant. Now, I'm going to use the number 3. And now let's graph 3n squared and 2n squared plus 7. And we can see that pretty quickly, as n increases, we have the situation where 2n squared plus 7 is less than 3n squared. And if we can find a constant, be it 3 or 4 or 1,000, such that this property is satisfied, then we say uh, that, the, that it's big O, that 2n squared plus 7 equals big O of n squared. In contrast, we wouldn't be able to find such a constant to show that 2n squared plus 7 is equal to O of n. Uh, just as an example, I'm going to make the constant very big, a million. So let's graph a million n and 2n squared plus 7. And you can see after a while, as n gets bigger, 2n squared plus 7 actually overtakes a million n and becomes bigger. So no matter what constant you use, um, you'll always have that property that 2n squared plus 7 will, will overpower uh, the n. And so that means that we can't say that 2n squared plus 7 is equal to O of n. So when we look at the first um, question, it, before we look at the solution, it would be good to just put up a definition here of what we mean by big O, and hopefully you can see that this encapsulates what we said about the constant and about um, exploring what happens as n increases. So now we're, let, when we're ready to uh, do a solution. In fact, I'm going to put up a few solutions. Here's the first. We have 2n squared plus 7 is less than 3n squared for all n greater than 4. So we, we got that 3 and that result essentially from the graph. Um, now, I haven't proven that. Um, normally, big O is taught in latter years at university, and so you don't need to prove the statement that I just read out. But if you need to prove it, if you think the examiner needs that, well, then go ahead and prove it. And then you can just say, so 2n squared plus 7 is equal to O of n squared. Another way of solving it is to derive sort of mathematically the a, a, a constant. So we have here, we have 2n squared plus 7 divided by n squared is less than 9 for all n greater than 1. Once again, I haven't proven that, but uh, and you probably won't need to. Then we say, so 2n squared plus 7 is less than 9n squared for all n greater than 1. And so we conclude that 2n squared plus 7 is equal to O of n squared. There's a final way you can do it where you don't actually work out the constant at all, amazingly. And it relies on first year calculus. So we let hn equal 2n squared plus 7 divided by n squared. We then say that hn approaches 2 as n approaches infinity. We then say that hn is continuous on the interval n greater than 1. So we conclude using first year calculus that hn is bounded on the interval n greater than 1. So there exists a constant c such that 2n squared plus 7 is less than cn squared for all n greater than 1, because that, after all, is what mean, it means to be bounded. And so then we can conclude that 2n squared plus 7 is equal to O of n squared. On to the second question. And here it may be useful to think of t as being something like 5. Um, so we can expand the expression and we get nt plus t choose 1 n to the t minus 1 plus all the way down to plus 1. And here's a chance to be 
sloppy in mathematics, which you don't often get this chance. So all we have to show is a constant. So don't get involved in trying to fine tune this. There are T plus one terms. Uh, all of those choose terms, T1, T choose one, T choose two. It's very easy to show if you expand, if you express them using factorial notation, uh, that they're all less than T factorial. And then for n greater than one, clearly um, all of the n to the powers are going to be less than n to the t. And once we've got that constant t plus one times t factorial, we can then just write that it equals O of n to the power of t. Sometimes we'll write afterwards where the constant uh, depends on t or sometimes people will write a little t just to alert the reader to the fact that um, the constant in the big O likely depends on t. The final question, I put this up because I wanted you to see the alternate notation for big O which is this double less than uh, notation, but we treat it just in the same way. So we have log to the base 10n equals 1 on log 10 to the base e times log to the uh, log n to the base e. And this 1 on log e uh, log 10 to the base e, that's a constant. So you may want to put in a second line where we say that it's less than 2 times uh, 1 on log 10 to the base e times the log n to the base e, which gives us the um, expression in exactly the right form for the big O conclusion that uh, that it's big O of log n to the base e. So that's it for big O notation made easy. I hope you found it useful.